told them repentance for forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed. People need to hear the gospel of repentance. And it's written in this book, the Bible. It's written in the Old Testament. It's written in the New Testament. I can't read all those scriptures. Let me read you at least six in the New Testament about repentance. The good news, all of us here know that we need to repent our sins. I don't doubt anyone here doesn't know that fact. The problem, we do not do it genuinely. Amen? In the book of Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, it speaks about John the Baptist. He came preaching. What was his gospel? Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen? That was where he began from. He was speaking about repentance. Okay, that was John the Baptist. How about you, Jesus? The Bible tells me in the book of Matthew, you can open there, even though it's written somewhere, because there's something you need to underline and go home and read once again. In the book of Matthew, chapter 4, the Bible tells me in verse 17, Luke wrote here and says, from that time, hey, which time? Amen. From that time, Jesus began to preach. Where did you begin preaching Jesus? I began by telling them, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. That was, you were in the third service, Jesus' first service was, repent, because the kingdom of God is before he cast out demons, before he told the seas to come down, before he gave them food to eat, before he proclaimed the Holy Spirit, he says, repent. Amen. That's why we are here to share about the gospel of repentance. Because in Luke chapter 5, verse 23, Jesus told the Pharisees, let me tell you what brought me here. I came. I have not come to call the righteous to repentance, but the sinners. I have come to call some people to repentance. Amen? That those are the gospels about Jesus. He began by speaking about repentance. He concluded in the book of Luke by telling them, also you go and speak about repentance. Tell your neighbor, when did you last hear about repentance? This is your opportunity. You are lucky. You are here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I know this is not a gospel of clapping hands and cheering, but we need it. Hallelujah. We really need it. In the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples. Amen. They spoke in tongues, speaking about the wonderful things God had done. The people were around, were confused about what these people were speaking about. Some of them claimed they are drunk. Amen. But Peter came out and said, no, no, no. It's very hard in our culture, in our country to be drunk at this time. Amen. But let me tell you the truth. The Bible says, in the last days, I'll pour out my Holy Spirit. That's what you are seeing. Amen. This is, this is the work of the Holy Spirit, which was proclaimed in the book of Joel. So the guys stopped making an allegation and gave a statement. What should we do? Amen. And in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 24, Peter began his ministry of proclaiming the gospel. He says, repent each of you to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for forgiveness of your sins. And you receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peter began by telling them the true gospel. It begins through repentance. Amen. And Peter knew this because he had issues throughout his life with Jesus. That's why he concludes by writing in the book. He wrote a letter to some people in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 39. He tell, what does he say? The Lord is patient towards you. He was telling some people. That God is patient towards you. Not willing for anyone to perish. That is not in his will. Amen. There are opportunities to perish, but God is not willing for anyone to perish. What should I do? Not to perish. But for all to come to repentance. 
Amen. Hallelujah. I praise the Lord who has given us the opportunity to share the gospel of repentance this afternoon because it's very important. What is repentance? Amen. It's very important as we have heard and we need to understand it accurately. Repentance includes recognition of sin. You recognize that this is a sin. There are so many things we do and we don't realize they are what? Sin. Oh, we are too used to them that we leave it like that. You have godless sorrow for that sin. You feel bad about what you did. Now, repentance, you recognize the sin, you feel bad about it, and you are committed to change. That's how it, it ends. When you only feel bad about it, you feel soft about it, and you do not want to change, you haven't repented. Amen? Repentance, including the feeling re regret, regretful, you regret. You feel grieved. You feel rom rom remorseful. Amen? Those three components accompany repentance. But without change of behavior, that's not repentance. Amen? I know sometimes you feel bad about it. Sometimes you even confess it. Sometimes you feel grieved by it. Today is the day to make a commitment to change. Amen? Say, I want to change the behavior. You know, the Hebrew word for repentance is to turn. Amen? You don't stay there. You turn. When one repents, he turns from his sinful way of life into the direction of obedience to God. I'm praying that God gives you the ability to make that turn because the devil has kept you there for a long time. Amen? I thank God you can even come for prayer here. I thank God you are part of those people who fellowship in overnights. But there is something you have to work on. How does it work? Hallelujah. Repentance begins with the Holy Spirit convicting you of wrong doing. I was seated here. It was a week of prayer and fasting. And among the preachers were this famous apostle, Bonjo. He spoke to us and said, when you get saved, you receive the Holy Spirit. How many believe in that? Amen. When you get saved, you, you receive the Holy Spirit. I said, wow, I received the Holy Spirit before I knew it. Amen. I believe this afternoon all of us seated here are filled with the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, I will send a helper, the Holy Spirit. What is he going to do? Among the so many things he's going to help you is to convict you of your sin. That was his work. Hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. He's going to do his work. And when he does his work, he's waiting you to do your work. Amen. He's waiting for you to do your, your work. So, repentance begins when the Holy Spirit convicts you of wrong doing. And at that point, you become painfully aware of your sin against God. Painfully aware of that. You even feel guilty about it. But it doesn't end there. Amen. It doesn't end there at feeling guilty, feeling bad. Genuine repentance results in a change of mind, change of heart, change of direction, change of conduct, change of attitude. That's what we are speaking about. Today, the Lord would like to see a change in your life. And he's knocking on the door. Will you open so that he changes you? He doesn't force it. He's looking for your permission. Instead of tolerating sin, we now hate it and turn to the life of obedience to God. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, there's something I'm about to hate. I tell her, there's something I'm about to hate. Don't look so hurry. Tell her, there's something I'm about to 
hate. I've been hating people. I've been hating politicians. This time, there's something also I'm, going, I'm about to hate. Amen. There is something I'm about to hate. And it's God and me who know it. Amen. You don't know it. Your husband doesn't know it. Your workmate don't know it. Your friends don't know it. You and your God, you know it. Amen. And you need to hate it. Hallelujah. You know, repentance, sometimes people misunderstand it or misinterpret it. But let me help you to understand the way God revealed to me. When some people think repentance is not necessary for salvation, what do they say? They say it is self-generated works, but salvation is only by grace through faith. Amen. Have you heard uh, that gospel? So everything was done at the cross. I just need to live my life. Ah, that's very dangerous. Amen. Faith and repentance bring genuine salvation. Let me explain this to you. True believers stand by faith to God. Hallelujah. A true believer will turn by faith to God and will turn from sin through repentance. Hallelujah. You turn by faith to God and you turn away from sin through repentance. That's complete salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's not that you have worked out, but you go through repent. You commit to change. I don't know about you, but I've met people so many times who tells me, you know, I want to be like you. I want to get saved. I need Jesus in my life. But there is something that is bothering me. There is something in my life. Until it goes away, then I will get saved. Have you heard of such people? Others put repentance before salvation. That is wrong. Amen. That is what? They think they must clean, and clean up their life before they trust Jesus. But they have no power. Amen. Come to Jesus the way you are. Salvation and cleansing are the work of God. Hallelujah. His Holy Spirit draws us to repentance by bringing conviction and awareness of the need for the Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. In John, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, he says, If we confess the sin, he is faithful and righteous, so that he will forgive us our sin. I like the last sentence. And cleanse in us. Amen. God is waiting for you. He has the materials for cleansing. Amen. Come and he will cleanse in you. You know, when you get saved, your repentance is so instant. But as you continue in the life, a Christian life, God keeps on cleansing you. Amen. He keeps cleansing you. Things start living your life one by one and they go and you move towards holiness. Some of us belong to a certain region where you go and confess before what we used to call men of God. Hallelujah. You go and confess your sins to someone. But after confessing, you have not determined to change. You say, I'll just go, confess, I'll be forgiven, and live my life. Amen. So confession isn't mere listing out sins to God and thanking God for his forgiveness, and you go and live on your life. Amen. It's not like that. It means we say something or agree with God about our situation, about our sin. We agree with God and you want a change. We deserve a change. It is seeing something is wrong the way God sees it. And our God is holy and he hates sin. So should we. Amen. Of course, there is no clapping of hands, but the Holy Spirit is working. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is working. I see the silence means the Lord is speaking to you. He'll love you to have a fundamental change. 
Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Tell your neighbor. Amen. Sometimes there is repentance. I call preemptive repentance. As a Christian and a born again who accepts Jesus Christ as the Lord and your Savior, there are things you need to make a decision now. This I will not do. Here I will not go. This I will not listen to. Amen. Someone said, sin is a choice. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not a choice you make usually at the moment of temptation. Temptations are there. Even Jesus was tempted. Amen. Jesus was tempted. So temptation will come your way. The Bible is very clear about that. But if you made a decision not to do it, hallelujah, even if it comes, you will not do it. I know in your life there are things you committed never to do. And even if they come, you don't do them. But there are things you are yet to make a decision about. Amen? There are things you have not yet made a decision about. You have not yet made up your mind. And the Lord is speaking to you this afternoon. Make up your mind about some things that you should not do you as a Christian. And I call that preemptive repentance. Even if temptation come for you, you made a decision a long time ago. I remember one time I had made a decision because I had a, a very bright father, but he was always drinking. And I made a decision, whatever religion I would go in, I'll never drink. Amen. Even when people brought opportunity, including himself, I said, I made a decision, I shall never drink. Amen. Amen. And we call that preemptive repentance. You, I repented drunkenism before I got a boat on my table. Hallelujah. Job says in Job chapter 31 verse 1, Job made a statement. I made a covenant with my eyes. Job had a covenant with his what? Eyes. In Job chapter 31 verse 1. I made a covenant with my eyes. Not look lustfully at a girl. So he had a covenant he had already made with his eyes. Amen. Maybe there's some covenant you need to make with your body, with your mind, with the way you behave, with, with your ears, with your eyes, with your nose, with your mouth. There are certain covenants you need to make as part of your repentance. Amen. That is too much. Let me conclude. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Repentance is necessary for every one. Hallelujah. It's necessary for the unbeliever because he comes to salvation through repentance. You say, I, I confess my sin and believe in you, Jesus. You've forgiven my sins. It is an essential part of salvation for all Believers, don't forget that important part of your salvation. It's called what? Repentance. And we need it for continuous cleansing and continuous relationship and fellowship with our God. I have a question. Amen. What are you ready to change? Because when we refuse to repent, which we usually do, sin gains a ground and a stronghold in our lives. And I wouldn't want it in you. Amen. God has given us the anointing of deliverance. And one of the things is to break strongholds. A strong mindset that believes in wrongdoing. Amen. If you are struggling with overcoming particular sin, even though you have confessed it many times, what changes are you going to make now that you have learned you need to change? Think about it. Things you need to change. Hallelujah. There are sometimes you sit behind there where the pastor is preaching and say, he has preached so much, but there's something I want to go with home. And I would note it. Hallelujah. We have been excited. We have jumped. The message was really touching. But there's something I want to go with home. So what things are you ready to change? 
I know. Sometimes the problem is that we enjoy the sin which we repeatedly confess we enjoy it. Now the question, what benefit are you driving from that particular sin? Mm -mm, think about it. What benefit are you driving from that particular sin? Mm -mm. What does God say about that sin in his word? Amen. One time Jesus told John in the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 2, speaking about churches. I don't know. Jesus was speaking about churches, not even sinners outside. He was speaking about churches. Say, these people need to repent. Rest I speak to them. Eh, that was a hard word. What? So what does God say about it? Amen. Would you like to continue a good relationship with my God? Hallelujah. Amen. You can put your hands up as we pray. Say, Father, you are Lord who forgives our sins. Lord, I can't do it myself. I can't. Even you people online, you can sit in your room and put your hands up and say, Father, there is something that, even, that stopped me from going to church today. There is something I remembered. I wouldn't even fellowship. But you are God. I have got the opportunity to hear the gospel of repentance. Father, you forgive my sin. Lord, you give me the ability never to go back there. Never to listen, Lord. Never to speak like that. Never to do that again. Because you are God of forgiveness. You change our lives. You saved us from our sins. You David said, have mercy on me, O oh God. He said, have mercy on me. God is having mercy upon you. God is having mercy upon someone seated here. He says, I'm breaking it. I'm breaking that bondage. I'm breaking that guilt. I'm breaking that sin. May that sin be broken from your life. May your life undergo a fundamental change. May the Holy Spirit convict you. May you obey the Holy Spirit this time. Say, I'm obeying the Holy Spirit. When he convicts me, I will not do it again. God, my Father, you are doing something new. David is saying, create in me a clean heart. There was some good, bad heart in him. He says, now I need a clean heart because they told him. Nathan told him, it is you. It is you who has done it. And he says, God, create in me a clean heart. Tell Tell God, create in you a clean heart. Say, Father, I need a clean heart. I'm tired of a pretending heart. I'm tired of this sin. I'm tired of this weird way of living. I'm tired of drunkenness. I'm tired of lies, Lord. I'm tired of hypocrisy. I'm tired of witchcraft. There's something I'm tired of, my God. All of us shattered your rima. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You can listen to much of what we share on 98.4 Impact FM every Saturday. Amen. We share the word of God. It may not be joyful, but it's very touching and changing. Amen. May the good Lord bless you.